8.1 fundamental counting principle in permutations. The fundamental counting principle says if there are n ways to do one thing and m ways to do another thing, then there are n times m ways to do both things. All right. I want you to really pay attention to that word and and something that's going to be very important as we go forward in the next couple of lessons. The word and is going to imply multiply. And means times. Example one, how many combinations are possible without repeats and then with repeats? So they show you this lock. And I don't know if you can see, but, but there are four little numbers. And you can spin around each of those four numbers. And it looks like there would be, how many choices would there be for that first spot? Actually 10, because, because it goes from, from 1 to 9, but there's a 0 also. From 0 to 9, there's actually 10 digits. So fundamental counting principle, I like to call a blanks problem. There are four blanks, and you'd have to have the first blank and second blank and third blank and fourth blank. So we can think about a fundamental counting principle problem like this as a blanks problem, and means times. So without repeats... You'd say, well, how many choices would I have to pick for this first digit? And you'd say 10. Now, knowing that we can't repeat any of the numbers, once we've chosen that first number, how many choices would I have for the second position? Nine, and then no repeats, so eight, and then seven. Okay, so going to want a calculator. For some of this stuff, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 is 5,040. 5,040 different combinations. Now, part B says, what about if we have repeats? Well, we can still look at this as a um, blanks problem. But this time, if we're allowed to have repeats, then all of those blanks could be any of the 10 numbers. Um, it's 10 to the 4th, and 10 to the 4th is 10,000. Example 2 is a different kind of lock, and you've all seen this lock before, I imagine. Um, this kind of lock usually has how many blanks in it? Regular combination master lock has how many numbers that you need? Three. You're going to have three. You're going to go. Um, but if you look at this specific one, how many digits are there on the, on the dial? 40, right? From 0 to 39, there would be 40. So without repeats, your first blank, you'd have 40 numbers to choose from. And then how many after that? 39. And then how many? 38. Forty times thirty nine times thirty eight, fifty nine thousand two hundred and eighty. Without repeats, oh, that was with, without. Now with repeats, it's basically the same thing. You've got three blanks, and you've got forty choices for each of those three blanks. So we really have to think about sometimes in the question if we're allowed to repeat or not. So we can do forty to the third power is 64,000. Number three, how many ways are there to arrange all eight books? So it's kind of hard to see, but I see eight books in that picture. Okay, there are eight books in that picture. We're trying to put all eight of them in a shelf. So if you think about fundamental counting principle, there are going to be eight blanks for us on that shelf. Okay, so think about it. Literally visualize yourself placing those books on a shelf. How many choices would I have to fill in that first position on my shelf? Eight, because there are eight big books to choose from. So I chose the first book and I put it down. Now, how many books do I have for the next position? 
seven, and then next, and then next, all the way down to the last book, I, I would only have one choice. So that's eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Forty thousand three hundred and twenty. How many ways? We are counting. Part B says exactly three of the eight books. So we're still placing books on the shelves, but how many blanks would I have in my blanks problem? Just three this time. First and second and third. So how many choices would I have for that first position? Eight and then seven and then six. Very good. So eight times seven times six. 336. Okay, and that brings us to an important concept. A factorial is the number of ways to put a set of n items in order. It's given with that exclamation point, n factorial. And the formula for a factorial is this. n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, times n minus 3. And you keep going, keep going, keep going until 3 times 2 times 1. Most people see that formula and they kind of freak out because it looks really complicated. But, but just look, look up here. This is what it is. You start with a number like 8, and you're going to go 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You're going to go from that number all the way down to 1. That's a factorial. Okay? Zero factorial equals one. That's something that comes up every now and again. Um, it's just a definition. We wouldn't use the formula for that. That's just something that you would need to know. If you ever come across a problem that says zero factorial, you just say that equals one and move on. A permutation is the number of ways to put some subset of R items out of N items in order. You can think of a permutation as a partial factorial. Notice up here, we were only arranging three out of the eight books, okay? And so I only did the first three pieces of that factorial, eight times seven times six. That's a permutation, okay? The formula looks kind of intimidating. N factorial over N minus R factorial. If you didn't have a calculator, you would use this formula, and hopefully you, that could get you there if the numbers weren't too big. But honestly, when we have a, a calculator, we're probably just going to use it to do our permutations. So what I want you to remember, though, about a permutation is we're taking a group from a larger group. Here in the next couple of days or so, once I start adding more formulas, it's going to get really confusing, okay? But in a permutation, we're taking a group of items out of a larger group of items. That's going to be really important for you to remember. And also, that order matters. Later, we'll have a different formula where order does not matter. But for this one, order matters. We're putting them in order. We're lining up the books in order. We're lining up students at the door in order. Order matters. Number four says evaluate. And so you've got a permutation. You've got your two arguments, five and three. That means we're taking a group of three items out of a larger group of five items. So if I was going to use the formula, the formula says five factorial over five minus three factorial. Or do the subtraction, that's five factorial over two factorial. Five factorial is this, five times four times three times two times one, and two factorial is two times one. So you might notice 
the two and the one can cancel, I'm left with five times four times three. That's 20 times three, which is 60. Now, honestly, I feel like it's kind of silly to do all that work when we can just do it on our calculators. So, you know, check it out. On your calculator, you can do, most of them are like this. You're gonna go five and then find your NPR button. Okay, five NPR three is 60. So on your TI calculators, you need to find the math button and arrow over to the PRB menu. It's inside there, okay? If you have like a, a TI-30, I think you have a PRB button somewhere. Click that, and you should be able to find the, the, the same uh, numbers, okay? I'm sorry? Right, exactly. You'll have an NPR and an exclamation point both inside that menu, okay? Very good. So then part B says four factorial. Well, that's four times three times two times one. And, and we can do that in our head. That's 12 times 2. That's 24. But you could also, on your calculator, find that exclamation point. 4 factorial is 24. 